Good Saturday afternoon, everyone. I'm meteorologist Satterson Green here at the Weather Center in KHOU. We're going to give you a brief update of what we have going on in the tropics down in the southern end of the Gulf of Mexico because this little storm system may strengthen and develop into a depression or storm before it eventually swings up this way, giving us a whole lot of rain as we go forward into Sunday through Wednesday's time frame. So it's a multi-day event, not just all in one shot, but we could be dealing with some widespread flooding concerns before all is said and done. So first things first, we have a tropical wave with a name associated with it from the National Hurricane Center. This is Invest 94L, and it's called Invest because it's an investigation that the National Hurricane Center is examining right there, but it's not a closed wave. It's pretty much an open wave moving up across portions of the northern end of the uh, southern branch of Mexico right there, pushing in towards the Bay of Campeche. But once it starts to get a closed circulation, that's where we may start to see sustained winds in excess of 35 miles per hour. Then it would be a tropical depression, and if it goes to the next level up, 40 miles per hour, well really 39, but 40 miles per hour would make it a tropical storm. And the next name on the, on the list is Nicholas. So, infrared satellite imagery right here showing you we have an 80% chance of development in the next two days, 90% chance of the next five days as it starts to move into more favorable areas for possible growth and development. And that system is relatively, let's go ahead and measure it out, coming in from the Houston metro area, about 700 plus miles away. So, it'll do a good amount of traveling across the western Gulf before it starts to impact portions of Texas as well as going into Louisiana as well as you start to make our way in throughout the region. Now, we don't have a forecast going because we don't have a depression or storm yet from the National Hurricane Center. So we're looking at the various computer models, the spaghetti plots, to get a, a bearing on where we may see this system go once it starts to move away from Mexico. And a lot of the computer models, we're looking at the consensus where a lot of them are agreeing upon. A lot of them have it going up between making a landfall potentially in northeastern Mexico or maybe just staying out to sea and going in towards southwest Louisiana. But we look at the middle branch where the most model models do have it going and it does take it pretty much parallel with the Mexican coastline and then heading on in towards I'll say the Corpus Christi area for a potential landfall, regardless if it is, like I said, a depression or storm. The center of circulation is where we see that potential landfall coming on in. But before it even gets to that point, we're going to be seeing a whole lot of moisture being kicked up this way because the upper level winds will be helping to do so, transporting that moisture across the Gulf of Mexico, a good long fetch of moisture, which is the distance you see in the moisture travel up across the Gulf of Mexico and in towards southwest Texas, for instance, and then eventually towards southeast Texas. So we're looking at here towards our two main long track models, the GFS model and the European model. GFS model in yellow, European model in red, and we can go ahead and see they do have a system they're keeping our eyes on right there. Let me go ahead and change that color so you can clearly see it. There we go, we got blue going on. So as we move forward in time, we do eventually see that we have the two systems, the two models, I should say, agreeing that's gonna be making its way just parallel to the Mexican coastline. European model, a little bit more of an open circulation, maybe a, a loosely tight-knit circulation, but the parallel lines you see right there, those isobars, they are nicely close together with the GFS model, indicating a stronger system. As we move forward in past Tuesday, going from Monday to Tuesday's time frame, we're now starting to see that we have both of those models pushing that system northward. We have the European model making a potential landfall near Corpus Christi, while the GFS model, the American model, has it still out to sea, but it has it on the stronger side in terms of intensity. As we go in past Tuesday into Wednesday, we have both of the models taking it up across southeastern Texas into Louisiana, both pretty much in agreement right there and where we go by the time we get towards that time frame. But all along the while, we're waiting to see how much moisture it'll kick up and deliver right here in Southeast Texas and especially in the Houston metro area, of course. So as looking at the various ingredients going into this system in terms of what it may need to strengthen and develop, we look at the wind shear, which is looking at right here at the jet stream level. That's 250 millibars, relatively the same altitude that a jet liner would be flying. Going throughout this time frame right now, the current time stamp is 5.30 p.m. Central Time. We do have a southwesterly strong wind shear coming on in across this highlighted area, which is where we see that potential for growth and development of this system over the course of the next two to five days. There's the X right there. X marks the spot in terms of where we may be seeing that system pushing on in over the course of the next hour or so. 
But as we move forward, going past this current time frame in towards the morning hours on Sunday, we now start to see the winds increasing up aloft, coming out of a south southwest direction. So we still have the system pushing up across the southwestern portion of the Gulf of Mexico. But all the while, we're now having a southwesterly shear trying to slow down the development of any potential depression or storm. But all the while, it's bringing in all that moisture further to the north. Right over here towards Corpus Christi, here's the Houston metro area, here's Lake Charles. So we can see those streamlines indicating where we would have that moisture go, and it's transporting it northward in towards our area, as well as making its way in towards southwest Louisiana. So we have a general idea of where that moisture will be going. It's just a question of how much. And since we've been uh, dry the past several days, we've had high pressure sitting around, had a couple of fabulous mornings and evenings and a couple of warm but relatively comfortable days the past several days in Houston. So the air is dry, the ground is dry, so the ground can absorb a whole lot of rainfall, but we have to saturate the atmosphere first. It's like taking a dry sponge. We have to throw water into it first before eventually you can squeeze that sponge out and get a whole lot of water coming out. Until that happens, you're just trying to saturate that sponge. That's what we're trying to do in the atmosphere right here, or at least we'd like that to not be the case. We get less rainfall coming on it. Sea surface temperatures are running into the mid to upper 80s. Very warm sea surface temperatures that that depth extends down a couple hundred feet. So it's ample supply of fuel for the system to utilize. And we also have a little steering current, high pressure sitting across the southeast. And that's where we do see that general direction of where that system may go down across southern Texas in towards southeast Texas, which of course puts us right in that bullseye. X marks the spot where we could potentially be seeing that system move on in. Olaf faded away. There's a little kind of shadow form or glimpse of itself. Larry pushed up beyond the, bar uh, the banner right there, so it's now fading away and heading into Greenland. But as we go forward into tomorrow afternoon, then eventually the evening hours, we can see right here, this is the European model. We have a closed circulation right there. And we switch this back to red so you can clearly see. We have a closed circulation right there. And the European model has been fairly consistent over the past several runs in where this system has been going. So we're using that one as our guidance right here as just one example to show everybody of where we could potentially see the heaviest rains come on down. So by Sunday afternoon towards Sunday evening, say you're sitting around, you're, you're watching the first Sunday of football, maybe you were at the, uh, the Game Energy Park watching the Jacksonville Jaguars take on, of course, our Texans. You may be leaving the, the park and seeing some scattered showers coming on down as we have some light to moderate rain across the southeastern corner of the metro area. So towards southern Harris County, down towards Brazoria County and Galveston County. North and west, you're just seeing cloud cover pushing on in. As we go forward in through Monday afternoon, then the evening hours, that's when the heaviest precipitation will be coming our way. We'll be dealing with rainfall rates running about one to two inches per hour as we go forward throughout the day. Sometimes we be going to two to three or even three to four inches per rain. It all depends upon where we get this little yellow blob to orange highlighted color coming on in. That's some high rainfall rates. And because it's of tropical in origin, the atmosphere is super packed with moisture. And that's where we can get that easily being squeezed down across a small area for a prolonged period of time. As we go forward from Tuesday into Wednesday, now we have that system. We can still see a closed circulation, although whatever it is when it makes landfall, it'll be weakening gradually over time. So we may just see a remnant low if it does become a tropical storm. But it's pushing in towards the border of Louisiana right there, taking the heaviest rainfall in towards central Louisiana. We have dry air coming on the back end of it, but we'll still be dealing with some moisture being pulled up from the Gulf of Mexico. And you can see right there, there's a nice little convergence barrier right there, right along the coastal area. So that means our coastal counties, Brazoria County, Galveston County, Chambers County, will be still be dealing with some heavy rain by Wednesday morning. Meanwhile, north and west, we're starting to dry out, maybe even towards Cyprus, for instance, in Jersey Village. We're still seeing some scattered showers hanging around. By Thursday, that system is pulling out of here. There it is, up near, oh, that looks like central portions of Mississippi. We have dry air funneling on down from a northerly direction. So any little bit of scattered show activity you do see will be isolated and only for a few pockets here and there across the metro area. So what does this all mean when it all is said and done in terms of how much rainfall we will be seeing come our way? Well, over the next five days, you can see right there the highlighted color. There we go, zoom on in. Of orange to gold is anywhere between five to seven inches plus. Some isolated areas may be seen double-digit rainfall totals when all is said and done. 
north and west, Bryan College Station, pushing in towards Austin County, uh, going up in towards the Huntsville area, for instance, you guys are seeing the lower end of things, so the flooding chances aren't too much of a concern over that way, but it's pretty much Harris County, south and east. We do have that potential. So for your day today, no flooding concerns at all. It's a marvelous day. It's gorgeous out there. Humidity is slightly kicking up a little bit because we're starting to get a little bit more of a breeze off the Gulf of Mexico. By tomorrow, we do have a chance for seeing some minor flooding coming into the picture. It does increase to a slight, that's a two out of four, for the yellow highlighted areas, which does include our coastal counties. As you move forward past Sunday into Monday, now we're taking that slight category, two out of four, and pushing it further north and west, which pretty much stops just across the northwestern corner of Harris County. So for areas south and east, Fort Bend County, Brazoria County, Matagorda County, all the way up in towards Liberty County and Chambers County, we do see that potential for more widespread flooding concerns. Bear in mind, this is mainly an urban flood event that we are talking about. We have not seen much rainfall at all the past several two weeks or so. So the rivers, the streams, the creeks, the bodies are all at very low levels at the bottom of their banks. The ground, it's pretty much uh, ready to go in terms of heavy rain coming on down. It could quietly absorb a lot coming on across the area. And we also have still the trees, strong root systems. We haven't completely transitioned into fall just yet. So those trees are still hanging on. Those shrubberies are still hanging on. So everywhere we can see, we do have the chance for really absorbing a good amount of moisture. It's the urban areas, the paved areas, the, the black tops, the, the roadways. Those are the areas where the water will come down and quickly run off. So if you have any drains by you, any sewer drains, any just, you know, your gutters, for instance, make sure they're free of leaves and debris. And that way you won't have that chance for seeing the flooding kick off rather early. And then next thing you know, you have a big problem and the event has just started. So look right here across your screen if you want to reach out to me for any contact information in terms of what we are dealing with this storm system as we go throughout the day today and tomorrow as well. We're having team coverage starting Sunday afternoon, going in throughout Monday, giving you the latest information about this system and also diving into what we can be expecting for the week ahead. We have a live update coming on the TV side of things at 6 o'clock after the Air Force and Navy game going on here right here on channel 11 and also later on tonight at 10, I believe 10 or 10.30, 10 o'clock. All right, see you guys then.